Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can re-key locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broadway. Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 802 here at the Big Dog WIFO time for the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, First Southern Bank and Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Bob. We've got special guests in the studio with us. Reggie Burgess at the front office of the high schools in the studio. Again, teachers were expected to report today originally, but it's been pushed back one day. They're going to head to school tomorrow. The start of school has been pushed back two weeks to August 24th, but uh, Reggie's in the studio with a lot of information that is pertinent to both those openings. So, Reggie, always good to see you. Appreciate you coming in and tell us what's on your mind. I sure will. Thank you for uh, for having me this morning. Uh, Amy had, Amy Denny had planned to be here this morning, but she got caught over caught over at the board office, so um, she's she's kind of stuck in her office over there. But um, uh, expressed her. Uh, uh, regret that she could not be here. Um, just want to share some things with the uh, with the public about the way school is going to go. Um, you know, we did, as you mentioned, we did push the uh, start of teachers back to tomorrow. Uh, they are their first day will be back tomorrow rather than today. It originally was a schedule uh, originally scheduled to be today. Um, then we'll also mention para pros. If if there are any para pros out there listening, be sure to check your work calendar um, because new calendars were sent out last week. Um, so it may be that you don't report on the day you originally were supposed to either. So. I believe pre-K pair pros uh, report back tomorrow maybe, but some others may report a different day. So go ahead, go ahead and check your calendar. Make sure you're, on, you're back to work on the correct day. Um, students will be going back on the 24th. Um, that's going to be a 170-day uh, schedule for the students rather than 180. Uh, we did, uh, Amy Denny worked very hard on that calendar uh, to ensure that we could get as many instructional days in there as we could um, and still end at, a, at a, a fairly good time back when, you know, in, in, the, early, in the late spring, early summer. Uh, we tried not to get it dragging out into June. Wanted to get students graduated uh, as, as soon as we could. So I think, I don't recall the exact last day of school, but it is there in May. Um, and that way we can have a hopefully have a graduation ceremony um, and, and get those kids graduated. And those who get off to the military can go ahead and do that. And others can get ready for college and, and careers. Um, I do want to also mention, I want, I want to say a special thanks to a couple of our community uh, businesses here, uh, Oishi and Kamours. They have donated um, some face masks or the funds to purchase the face masks uh, so that the students, and, or I'm sorry, so that the teachers and the pair pros could have those, um, the, the face shields rather. I said face masks, but I, I should, have said, should have said shields. Um, I know that uh, just from last week, I was in a uh, the new teacher orientation. Uh, had to wear that mask all morning, and it's they're, they're hot and they're uncomfortable. Uh, and I know that's going to be a big adjustment for our, our para pros and our teachers and our kids. Uh, so um, the face shield may be the way to go. That's what I'm going to go with for sure. Um, they do, uh, Oishi donated 300, uh, and Kamours uh, they they offered us a grant, and we we're, were able to purchase uh, several hundred of those in the first round. And we'll also be purchasing more. The company we ordered them from would only allow us to purchase a few at a time or a few hundred at a time so we'll be getting those and distributing those to the teachers and the para pros um, and as more we're able to order more we'll get them for the administrators and the other support staff 
So, again, uh, teachers report tomorrow. That gives them several weeks. What all would they be doing to get ready for school? I mean, um, we're going to uh, – the, the principals are going to be a lot, doing a lot of training with them um, on how to uh, make sure the rooms uh, stay clean, uh, sanitation, uh, make sure that they're sanitized, and just make sure that we're doing the best that we can to make sure everybody's safe. The, um, you know, there's there's a lot of speculation out in the public, um, but I, w- I just want to be up front and honest that our very n- – number one concern is the safety, safety of the kids, safety of the adults in the building. Um, um, the decisions that Dr. Brinson and the board have had to make have not been have not been done so flippantly or or without regard to safety. That is the the number one concern. So during these these next couple of weeks, the teachers will be preparing. Uh, they'll be making sure that if we have to pivot in a hurry um, and go to vis, visual uh, vis, uh, uh, virtual learning or distance learning, uh, that it'll be a smooth transition. You know, last spring we did that, and it happened so quickly that uh, it, the distance learning was not really what we wanted it to truly be. But this year, lots of thoughts uh, and plans have gone into it, and the teachers will be preparing for that in addition to uh, getting their classrooms ready, um, as they normally would, getting ready for the open house. Uh, the open house date was pushed back to the 13th. Uh, that is a virtual open house. And uh, I also want to mention, if, if we could, that the uh, if anyone who's listening, if you have uh, updated, if you need to update your contact information to the schools, please do that uh, as, as soon as you can. Call the school office. Um, and, and make sure they have your contact information because we'll be sending out uh, links uh, or information rather to the links on for open house uh, that'll be coming uh, next week uh, early next week uh, so that you can access access the uh, that link to the uh, to the open house now where do they go to the link for the virtual open house and does every school have their own separate link or if your teacher has how's that it'll, work? it'll probably be on the um in the google classroom or on the website um the school websites uh the directions the teachers will be contacting each student or each family that of the student in their homeroom um giving the information on how to log in okay so the, the teachers will reach out and contact yes. those so everybody will know where to log in and that's going to be a week from thursday right the 13th right. at yes. 3 p.m yes how long does that, that normally last about an hour um, well, the, the, uh, normally open house is about two, two and a half hours, but the, the video that they're going to receive, the open house video is going to be a very short link or for a very short video. Uh, just really the teacher introducing himself, um, showing maybe a, a little video of what the classroom looks like, uh, some first day procedures, what they might need for the first day of school. We didn't want to have it, uh, you know, something really, really long for folks to watch, but just really a brief introduction. And most teachers and most schools, they post online as well what all sc- kids need for the first day of school, right? That's correct. So on the they, system website they, and they school get websites. all that. You can get all that information on the website, right? That's correct. So, again, if everybody's out there listening, again, they need information, again, the best place to get the information is on the school website for sure. That's correct. So – I guess everybody's getting ready for tomorrow. They are. Um, as teachers are excited, we've got. Uh, if, if folks are, uh, have been riding around town, they will have, they will have noticed. Hopefully, the we have some signs around. They're, they're black signs with white print on them. It says, "We miss your kids." The teachers have been telling us they just they are ready to get back to work. They miss these kids. Um, they love them, and um, and it's, you know we're we're getting ready for the new normal. Uh, but we uh, we want to get the kids back in the building. We we truly and sincerely feel like the the best thing for the kids is to get them uh, back in the school sites uh, with the mitigating safety factors so that everyone can be as safe as possible. Uh, but just really want to get them in there, begin teaching, get the kids learning again. Um, if we have to go to distance learning, we will, but we really want to try to keep everyone in the buildings and, and keep them safe. Um, don't, don't know if uh, folks are aware or not, but, you know, uh, from what we've, what we've heard through our community, uh, cases, uh, child abuse, sexual abuse, things like that, those are on the rise. And that's because kids are in, in you know, they're, they're not in school where trained professionals, the teachers can recognize what's going on and, and, and report those things. So um, just if, if for no other reason for that, just to protect our kids um, and get them uh, the, the, the safety that they need and um, get them educated, get them, you know, teach them up. It's hard for a, a student, uh, a kindergartner, to sit in front of a computer and learn how to read. they got to be in front of their teacher. they got to learn with them. You know, you talked about the mask and things that are going to be provided. You know, every year they have the back-to-school supply sites and things like that. Have you heard of any of those? I know, I know that some, uh, I, for Calvary Baptist, for instance, they have had some back to school, uh, things. I'm sure others have, but I'm, I'm not aware of those. Um, uh, I do know that several churches are, are providing things. Um, I, I did want to mention also, and I, I failed too early when I mentioned the signs, those, there are 30 of those We Miss Your Kids signs around town. Uh, if, uh, that's really kind of a little back to school contest that we came up with. If, uh, someone can, uh, 
find, locate all 30 of those signs or as many or the person who locates the most of them uh, between now and the 13th, if they will uh, call the board office, call me at 427-1000, extension 390. Um, the person who finds the most, we're going to give that family a fully stocked uh, book bag full of school supplies. Okay. Sounds good. So. And so how they do that? They just take pictures of them, or they just uh, write just down the location? Write down, write down and let me know the location. They write them down. Okay. Or they can take pictures, either way. Sounds good. Well, again, um, like I said, the decision's been made. Uh, I've been reading over the weekend, you know, so many different opinions. You know, they said there's not really any right or wrong answer. Right. So we'll just hope for the best, yeah. and hopefully things will go well with the teachers in school tomorrow yeah. and then um, the students on the 24th and – Hopefully everything will go well. It's, it's really been interesting because uh, l- last week, I forgot what day it was, but I had a parent call, um, and she was so grateful, so thankful that we were asking the kids or requiring uh, everyone to wear the face mask. That was, that was really the thing that made her feel more comfortable about sending her child to school. Um, talked to that lady, and, and just a few seconds later, my phone rang again, and I got chewed out from a parent who said, my kid's not going to wear a face mask. You can't make him do that. <laughs> I'm like, that's just a, a little snapshot there. If you're not going to be able to please everybody, but we're going to try to do the best we can to make sure kids are safe. That's for sure. Like I said, they made that comment clear at the board meeting. No matter what decision they made, it's not going to please everybody. But I said they're doing what they think is best for the majority of kids involved. And I said they're making plans in case it doesn't go well to go to virtual. But hopefully, you know, I said most people believe that kids need to be in school. I you know, I asked this question. Maybe you know you're an educator. You know, special needs kids. Are you hearing from those parents? Because we, we I read an article. Over the weekend, where those you know, there's one place where the parents are just irate, but they think their kids are just being left behind. So, yeah. are you hearing from those special well, needs and, parents? And we have uh, because you know those those students, um, you know, there there are certain they have needs that have to be met, and and it's hard to do that when they're not in school. Um, and then you have other students who are uh, those they have those 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 safety issues or those medical issues that are going to preclude them from coming to school and we've, we've made accommodations for them to be able to uh to stay home and be educated but um for the most part from the ones that we're hearing from they they want their kids to be in school um they they understand that the, the best best way to educate a child is to be in front of the teacher okay reggie well, again anytime you need information uh you know let us know we'll get it out there but again uh what time do teachers report tomorrow? What time they should uh, be? It depends on. I, I think Arthur Williams teachers are going back around seven thirty. So I'd say, in, you know, it depends on the school, but seven thirty, eight o'clock, something like that. Yeah, good. Again, uh, we'll look forward to the school year. Like I said, hopefully things will go well. Like I said, all the sport teams are out there practicing every day, getting ready for the season. So uh, hopefully it'll go well. Like yeah, I said, I mean, that's I'm, all you can hope. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm hopeful and I'm excited. Um, this this kind of you know, this time of year is just exciting when you got you know, the kids coming back. And I told the new teachers the other day that. Uh, I know, I know where they're, you know, what they feel like when they're sitting there. They've got this sense of excitement about getting ready, but, you know, you kind of have this also, you know, this, this sense of, I don't have really, really idea what's going on because they're brand new. Um, I think we had around 40, 42 teachers that were, uh, new to our system. Okay. Yeah. About 40 or 42 in that, that was sitting in the, in the, uh, high school auditorium and they were, uh, not all brand new teachers fresh out of college, but new to the system. So we had some, uh, it was, it was a great day of new teacher orientation. We had them, uh, excited. Uh, they're ready to go. They're, I think most people are excited. Like I said, it's been a while since they've been in school. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, it'll be interesting to get August 24th. This day has been pushed back two weeks, but the teacher day, yeah, and uh, I asked that question, I can't really, why one day for the teachers from August so, 3rd to uh, August 4th? What was the 190-day contract? So okay. They, so to make sure they work their 190 days, it just it worked out. They it worked out. Start yeah. one day later. One and day how later. many total are there, 40 to 42 new ones? How many total teachers Yeah. In the um, in the system. We have around 800 employees in the system. I'm not sure how many of those are teachers. Right. Okay. Okay, Reggie. Well, again, wish the teachers the best tomorrow. Like I said, if you get any information about the back to school supplies, things like that, please get us that to us so we can let people know. Sure. If any church out there has uh, something like that, uh, get us that information. We'll pass along because a lot of people are asking about that. Okay. That's the one thing I heard. You know, have, you know, with school starting the 24th. Uh, you know, there's always organizations that provide back to school supplies for some kids. So uh, again, they're looking for that information. If you hear of any of that information, just get it to us, and we'll pass that information along. I but sure will. We appreciate you coming in yes, again. Uh, we're looking forward to the school year. Like I said, it's been a while since they've been in school. I know the the staffs have done a good job going in and sanitizing everything. That's one thing that's been uh, you know, instructed. Uh, the janitors are really working hard, wiping everything down. So I think they're going to have sanitation. Place hand sanitizer places stations in place at the school. Is yes. that correct? Yes. So, so 
uh, in the water. One thing, uh, also, the water fountains will not be in use, so they're asking people to bring a water bottle. Have you have you gotten that message out there, everybody? Yes, we are. The, uh, the water fountains will be off to begin the year. We are looking at installing water filling stations uh, so that kids will bring a, a water bottle um, sometime during the day. They can refill those. Um, did also want to mention, too, and I, forgot, I failed to do that, was on transportation. Um, I know that, that school buses are the only option for some parents, and, and uh, we want to make sure that everybody who needs to ride the bus has that opportunity to do so, but if if uh, your child can get to school in, a, in an alternate way, um, we, we ask the parents, please look into doing that if possible, um, just to free up space. You know, we're going to still try to socially distance kids as best we can, but it's hard to do that on a school bus. So if those who um, can uh, maybe get their kids to school a different way um, could do that, then that would just free up the extra space for those who have to ride the bus. Okay, Gracie. Well, again, appreciate you coming in. Yes, and uh, we'll look forward to the school year again. Wish the teachers the best of luck tomorrow. First day of school for teachers is tomorrow. First day of school for students is August 24th. And, again, if you have any information between now and then, just get it to us. We'll sure be glad to pass it along. But, again, just want to stress again, if anybody out there, parent, student, whatever, looking for the correct information, the information is on the school website. Make sure you get your information from there. Don't go to Facebook. Don't go to Facebook. Don't go to social media. Get your information from the school's website. They have all the pertinent and correct information. Or call me. I'll be glad to glad to talk you through it. Look at it, Reggie. Always good to see. You. Appreciate you coming in, Thanks, sir. We'll be back with more of the World Famous Bitch and Bob Show after this. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come to the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number's the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. 18 here at the Big Dog WIFO. Uh, back to school story from me, Bob. This is going way back, like 73 or so. I guess I would have been in second grade uh, we, before we moved back down here. They used to play World Series games still in the day. and uh, Those are the good old days. Yeah, good old days. Well, I had to, uh, said I had to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You just wanted to check out the score. Yeah, it, it was on the TV in the library, and you could. Sit, I'm sitting outside of the library watching until for about 30 minutes, and here comes the principal. Why, what are you doing? <laughs> At least you get caught with your transistor radio, and, and I used to sneak the transistor radio in, and try to listen to the game. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, I got, you have that other story where you took the I bus. Got caught, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't. A, no, that, that was wasn't. Just, no, it was just, that's just regular, regular game. game. Yeah. yeah, that's a regular game. Just you, decide you got a to ruler play. on the wrist, right? Yeah, it's not a good. <laughs> it was, had a good day at the ballpark, though. Yeah, I'm sure you Pirates did. Won, but, yeah. but, again, this baseball season, like I said, it's underway, and it's interesting how it's all playing out. But, like I said, strange story out of New York where the guy just disappeared and yeah. decided to opt out. But it'll be interesting to see if Clay Travis's theory is correct that a lot of these teams that are struggling, most players will just right. decide to opt out. And say, Aren't they saying, though, that like these games they're going to make up are going to be seven-inning doubleheaders like they do in the minor leagues? All right. So you're going to play seven and then a break and then seven. You better see how many more NFL players opt out of the season, too, because quite a few are Today is the deadline. Today is the right? deadline, yeah. Players are upset about that. They Jack was quarterback. Been. Did he test positive or opt out? What was that? He's just in the COVID-19. I'm not sure if he tested positive or was around somebody. Matthew Stafford, also a Detroit Lions quarterback, former Georgia Bulldog. He's also in that COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. I said the season's still weeks away, so if they get it now, they can you know get ready get ready for the season. So. And college football still waiting for to see the schedules. Again, ACC and SEC made their decisions on playing all-conference games. 
but the schedule has not been released as of yet so on you know the ten game schedule. So that should be released shortly. So since we get Georgia and Georgia Tech schedule, we'll pass that information along. But unfortunately, first time since nineteen twenty five, there will be no Georgia Georgia Tech game. So that'll be interesting. No in state rival game this year. Well, wow, yeah, I was going to ask you what year that was, 1925. 1925. I guess that was due to the war, I would think. You, know, didn't you say were between war. wars, weren't you? What's that? I think you were between wars in 1925. I'm not sure, but that's the only year that they didn't I play. I wonder yeah. why. The article didn't say why. It just said that was the year they didn't play a game. So. But Long no, rivalry. No Florida, Florida State, yeah. no Clemson, South Carolina, no Louisville, Kentucky. So the rival games. It's interesting to – uh, in the Pac-12, they're going to start the season with the USC US, UCLA game, so they're going to start the season with the rival game out there. So, be interesting how it all plays out. But as soon as we get that schedule, we'll pass that information along. So, it's going to be a ten-game SEC schedule, not 